Thanks very much, and uh, thanks to One to One for putting another great event. So mineral commodities. Um, this is a site that's about 400 k's from where we're sitting at the moment. It's a mineral sands. It's one of the highest grade mineral sands deposits um, or operations anywhere in the world. This was plant was commissioned in 2013. It's been in production since 2014. Uh, it's delivered about $50 million US in uh, <clears throat> NPAT to uh, the shareholders, and we've paid about $22 million in dividends to our shareholders as a result of uh, operating this asset. Right, where am I pressing? There we go. So there's a the standard disclaimer that you can read at your leisure. We're an ASX listed company, probably a company that a lot of us um, haven't, hadn't heard of. Um, uh, it was a shell that um, uh, uh, the Caruso brothers um, secured back in 2000 uh, and they um, introduced or acquired two mineral sands deposits uh, out of South Africa, or two mineral sands projects rather. Um, as I said, the, the company's been operating those projects, well, one of those projects since about 2014 um, and the, the company's been, uh, that's the only producing asset as of, as of um, uh, this year, well, excuse me, as of last year where we acquired our second producer in scale and graphite. So the, the, we've, uh, our global footprint of the company has expanded. Life for us started um, with, uh, with Zolabini and Tormann um, in southern Africa. Uh, however, under the sort of uh, the, the challenging sort of um, permitting conditions imposed upon us by the Zuma-Zwami uh, era in South Africa, uh, the company decided that they needed to t diversify away from a single asset in South Africa. And that's when they, um, they acquired the Munglenup Graphite Project. In about 2015 and 16, um, the, the dawn of the, the battery minerals sort of... Um, uh, uh, craze into um, into acquiring assets that would give us exposure into this huge uh, theme of electrification was occurring, and these guys identified what uh, is, was one of the most highest grade undeveloped undeveloped graphite projects globally, and right on their doorstep in Western Australia. Um, that project has now got very advanced study work, where we've got a DFS that was published in in January. Um, as part of that study work and that investment in a carbon strategy for the business, they identified that production and production tonnes was essential to unlock the value at Munglenup, which led to the recent acquisition of Scarlin Graphite in Norway. Uh, Scarlin is one of the hot, well, is the highest grade graphite mine in the, in the world in production at the moment. So Tormund's where the journey started for the company. Tormund is your classic place of beach style deposit, so where we've got all the mineralised um, sort of geological belts that have been weathered away into, into paleo channels and deposited through like the well, through the old um, Oliphants River and pushed out into the Atlantic Ocean. Now the Atlantic Ocean is. Um, has, has done a natural jigging and separation effect of those minerals. It's cleaned those minerals. And then um, the Benguali current has pushed up with this natural J-Bay effect that we have at Tormund and has washed the mineralisation onto the beach. We effectively mine that beach. And not only has it washed it onto the beach that we're mining at the moment, but in, historically it's, it's washed it into strand lines that sit directly behind our deposit. So we've got mineralisation that runs in strand lines all the way along the back of our deposit, as well as our existing mining beach areas that we, where we're mining at the moment. So the, the, it's a very unique project in that essentially we go through and mine the beach areas and then six months later we come back and not only have those areas been refurbished by the tidal action of the Atlantic Ocean, they've also been remineralised. So we started out with a jort compliant indicated resource of only 2.7 million tonnes in October 2014 and we've mined 11.7 million tonnes and we've, um, we've seen, all we've seen is a depletion in our grade. So we've pulled over 11.7 million tonnes, uh, initially mining at, at, at circa well, a staggering 55% of heavy mineral in our first year, where we're now down mining to about uh, 14% uh, as, we, as we mine today. So that's, that's um, afforded the, uh, the, the shareholders a rich return, 50 million, as I said, of, of uh, nearly 50 million of free cash, or sorry, of, US, of NPAT to the company, 22 million of dividends. We started paying dividends back in 2016. Uh, and we, we, we're uh, obviously a very, very high yielding junior mining company um, and we've got a wonderful return on our equity that we've deployed today. So um, the, 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 I guess the, the area here in yellow you can see is this area here. That's essentially where we've mined. Um, we've, we've, re we've 
yeah. mined all that mineral, and what we've what we <clears throat> have always been wanting to do is to expand that mining. The replenishment um, profile needs to be managed. So we, what we look to do is to move the mining operations to the north. In um, 2018, we've made an application to expand our mining right to move up into those northern beaches area. Um, in June last year, we received an environmental authorisation, and we're just now awaiting the outcome of a of a, of a uh, appeal that went in on, on the back of receiving that approval. So the plan is that once we receive these ap approvals, we would expand our mining operations, we'd move straight up into the northern beach areas, and we would, where we would essentially be putting the same amount of material through our plant, but we'd be doing it at double the grade. Um, concurrently, we'd be developing a back strand line directly alongside the plant or behind the plant, and we'd start scheduling that material for, for mining um, soon after. So the way that would look subject to the permit drop is we've got a phased expansion. The study work's been done here. We're just waiting for these permits to drop. In the first, um, in the first um, phase of, of expansion, we'd go up into the northern beaches area where we'd be pr processing similar material. We'd take a primary beach concentrator up there and then we'd just truck 2.5 million tonnes down into the same plant and we'd effectively double our concentrate. So the 10,000 tonnes of zircon and rutile that we're producing currently would, would look more like about 40,000 tonnes. Ilmenite would go from 180 to 200. Our garnet would go from 50 to circa 160 and magnetite. So these are, these are projections based on the study work that we've done um, and based on, I guess, based on the, uh, our, our knowledge of the mineralised system that we've been operating in for some time. Phase two would, would incorporate those, those beaches or that strand line directly behind the processing plant. So all we're going to be doing is essentially mining the strand line that would be directly to our left and right of where we've got our processing infrastructure. And um, we'd need to put a primary crushing circuit in there. The alien sands need a bit of a crush. They've had the, the, some carbonate leaching through that's, that's toughened up that, those, those horizons, crush, put in a classifier, and we could see our, um, our throughput expand by, by doing that pre or that's, that um, at pit concentration could go from three to three and a half million tonnes. And again, we'd see this, this step change in our, in our production profile with, with re relatively modest capex. Once we sort of secure this, this, um, this tenure, uh, um, we could also look at investing in an MSP and, and there's, some, there's some wins that we can get on our, from our cost perspective where we could connect to ESCOM, uh, we could put in a um, desal plant and we could start shipping out through Saldana as opposed to Cape Town and reduce our sort of our OPEX by circa three to five a tonne. So that's the, that's the mineral sands aspect of the story. Excuse me, this, is, uh, this, is, this really is a speedy presentation because I've got a whole carbon strategy that I need to talk to. So the company ad identified that and there was a real opportunity in this in the, in the emergence of um, uh, of the electrification of of the global vehicle fleet. Um, they identified Munglen up. We booked a PFS a year after we got hold of it. We put a DFS out in January. Good robust numbers. But we identified that you know the, the traditional market as it sits in putting production into those traditional um, in that tr into that traditional market was going to be tough. What we needed to do, if you look at the market as it sits in a traditional sense, which is essentially where it is right now, um, and then you add the, the product, the growth from um, from batteries, you can see that the market goes from like a one percent growth rate annualised to a nineteen percent growth rate. But the traditional market is is what we've got to deal with here in in eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So to put those tons, those production tons from any new new project was always going to be challenging. So what we identified was there was an opportunity to acquire production and we could not only acquire production but we could acquire the production in the fastest growing market. So China's going to be the largest market but the European market's going to be the fastest market and it's going to be a market that's going to put much more emphasis on the, um, the zero to, to low carbon um, emissions that go into producing that material. And we found in Norway, which is 100% um, renewable energy, uh, we found this wonderful high grade, the highest grade um, graphite mine in the world. Had about 10,000 tonnes of production pro uh, profile and it had the ability to, um, to expand that production and obviously then build in an anode process and do that under the guise of using perfectly green power. So I'm going to completely run out of time here, um, ladies and gentlemen, so I do apologise. But um, the, in, an, in, in essence, what we're looking to do at Scarland is to build a downstream process. That's an advanced process for, all, for us already. We've already worked out how to optimise this, um, this plant and improve the concentrate that we've got it that's coming out of Scarland and concurrently what we're going to be doing is developing a downstream process with a, with a um, specific um, look, uh, specific investment in how we purify that material. So unfortunately I'm out of time. I would love the chance to continue the conversation and explain to you um, what we're going to be up to at Scarland in the coming years. Thank you very much.